afternoon, good morning, wherever you happen to be in the world. Shane McCusker here, Intelligent Software. Welcome to uh, another webinar. Today I'm going to be talking about business development for recruiters. Um, this is a, a Google Hangout that we're using, so I'm now streaming on my webcam for the first time, so hopefully <laughs> hopefully it'll add something to it. Uh, don't worry if you're not. Whenever the web uh, webinar kicks off officially at uh, on the R, then I'll switch over to screen sharing. I really I'm just creating a little bit of noise at this moment in time so that you can test your video, test your audio and make sure everything's working for you correctly. Well, we've got a busy and packed uh, agenda for business development. Um, there's a lot to talk about. I've focused in on um, a lot of free tools, um, mainly the techniques of, of using them. Uh, I've got bits and pieces of our, our, our paid for tools in there as well, although hopefully I've found enough ways that if you're not using those particular tools, we can find ways of doing it for free. Um, try, and, try and keep everybody happy. Um, what else is happening? Yeah, a uh, little bit of pre-promotion for uh, another thing that a very good friend of mine, Bill Borman, is coming back to South Africa in November. If you are interested in social recruiting, interested in any of this stuff, then on conference is absolutely the place to be. Uh, for those people who are listening who may be in South Africa, Bill will be in Johannesburg on the 8th of November and in Cape Town two days earlier on the 6th of November. So uh, check out www.truesa.coza if you'd like to get more information on that. I met Bill a few years ago, um, uh, really when the whole social recruiting thing was kicking off and Bill was there uh, at its infancy. He introduced me to the concept of Unconference um, and I went along to his first one in London, uh, True London in, in 2009 I think it was. Um, since then the whole thing's gone global but it's the most intense, fascinating way to get a group of people together, recruiters, technologists, marketing people, whoever, anybody at all and put them in a room and have them discuss all sorts of interesting aspects of the recruitment industry. And, you know, we ran it last year. Uh, some of the, the best tracks were just tracks where people turn up and say, I'm trying to achieve X, Y, Z. I've got no idea how to do it. Any ideas? And it just brought so much thinking and creativity to bear on the problems and challenges that, that people in business were facing. Um, Unconference isn't like a, a conventional conference in that even though there are people there who are absolutely experts in their field, you know, everybody has some level of expertise or some uh, perception of it. So it's about bringing people together and having conversations. And you have tracks. You have a track leader who, who keeps the thing on track. But anybody is free to talk, ask questions, make comments, get up and leave. Uh, which you, you move on to another track. We run multiple tracks in parallel. So if you're interested in that type of thing, one, check out Bill Borman. Uh, look look at look for him on, on, on the internet. He runs true unconferences throughout the world. I think there's about 30 of them this year. Uh, virtually every, definitely every continent in most countries, uh, certainly in most countries that are listening to my webinars. Um, so if you get a chance to, to find out what's going on there, check it out. And best of all, if you come along to South Africa, I'll be there too, along with Bill. What else is happening? Um, yeah, anybody who's in London, um, in October I'm going to be at True London, which is another one of Bill's conferences, and they've asked me to be uh, some sort of sourcing person. I'm not entirely sure what this involves, and to be perfectly honest, as everybody knows, I'm not really a sourcer, I just talk about sourcing. So um, I'm not too sure how qualified I am, but they've got a whole lot of other people who actually do know what they're talking about, uh, and I'll be hiding out amongst them all. Um, and so if you're interested in unconferences in, involved in sourcing, then come along to London, I think it's the 22nd and 23rd. Um, again, check out True London. What else is happening? Okay, we've got another uh, five minutes to fill. So um, some of the stuff that we're doing, uh, as you know, uh, today I'm doing three webinar sessions. Um, these are live sessions, so I'm here right now. This is now the 4th of October, uh, and it's the middle of the day where I am, but I appreciate we've got people all around the world. Um, we don't have a chat function on a Google Hangout, but I do have Twitter. So if you are, if you're there and you're listening, perhaps you could send a tweet out. Just mention my Twitter handle, which is intelligence spelt with a one. So it's one n t e l l i g e n c e. I'm glancing to the side here because I'm watching my Twitter stream on my iPad. Um, I, I see that the ladies from Remo Max have already been tweeting. 
Um, if, if you are listening into this now, please send out a tweet saying that you are simply so I know that somebody's there and that I've pressed the right button and I am actually broadcasting because it is quite difficult for me to tell. Um, if we don't have Twitter activity, uh, it's just me talking to, to a computer in an empty room. Um, let me just check this just to make sure that it's, it's all there and operational at this moment in time. I assume it is. Let's see if I'm broadcasting. Two seconds now. So, um, yeah, that's opening up now. So hopefully I'm broadcasting. Hopefully you can see this. Yeah, there we go. So I can hear myself an echo. Um, the uh, so send out tweets uh, throughout the, the the webinar. If you've got any questions or comments or better ideas or criticisms or anything at all, really, um, send out send out tweets on the hashtag. I probably won't be able to tweet as I'm talking because that would be next on to impossible. But I will do my best to uh, answer any questions or comments as they come in. And obviously, you can see each other's tweets and see see who else is tweeting. If you just use my uh, Twitter handle, intelligence with the one as as a hashtag then uh, we should be able to see what's going on. Nope, nobody's taking me up on that. But I will, I will, I will hope that somebody does at some point in time. Uh, generally speaking, we do get quite a good audience for these webinars, although I'm not entirely convinced how uh, uh, Twitter-orientated everybody is. What are we doing for time? Four more minutes to go. Keep on talking, Shane. Okay, uh, some of the feedback from uh, the last webinar I ran, well actually I've, I've run a couple, I ran one on um, LinkedIn, uh, since then LinkedIn has done all sorts of stuff, uh, they, they, they've they been a little bit awkward in the way that they use it, they're really trying to close down on people's ability to um, gain access to uh, your network, it used to be you had good visibility of first, second, third degree connections, group connections, now it's really difficult to, to see anybody you're not directly connected to. In today's webinar I'll be looking at um, just some of those changes and, and see what's going on there uh, and find some clever little ways to, to avoid the, the problems that they've put in our place. Um, I was reading an article, Johnny Campbell from Social Talent wrote a really good blog article um, during the week looking at that and arguing that it is now justifiable to spend money with LinkedIn, whereas before it possibly wasn't. Um, and he actually went to the trouble of looking at all the different pricing options and the different packages. And it's quite difficult and confusing to work out it out what LinkedIn actually sell. Uh, certainly I'm not too sure what it is. But Johnny, if you check out socialtalent.co, Johnny wrote some really interesting stuff about that uh, worth looking at. One of the other things that LinkedIn is, is now really trying to push uh, is this notion of endorsements. If you look at anybody's profile, I'd encourage you to look at mine. Uh, if you're first degree connected to me, which if you're not, please connect. Um, it asks you to to endorse me on, on the skills that I've put up or to add other skills that you think that I'm competent and capable of. And once you do that, then it shows you your full network and asks you to endorse other people. I'm not entirely convinced that that's a good idea um, in the sense that you it asks you to endorse people in, in a block of skills. Um, and it, it, it actually it doesn't ask you to rate it. I suppose it's something that's a little bit more immediate and easier than writing references for people. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Time will tell. I'm not like, even too sure how searchable the information is, um, but obviously LinkedIn is using it as a mechanism to, to weight searches more accurately and be able to, to value people. So if you're looking at my profile on LinkedIn, Shane McCusker, then please uh, Endorse me if you think that I've got any notion as to what I'm talking about and if it's useful to you or not. Um, so that's some of the stuff, but I'll talk a little bit more about that when we kick off the webinar in under 60 seconds time. Okay, what else is happening? Right, now two seconds. Before we begin, I'm just going to <clears throat> reorganize my screen a little bit because I, I want to go on to screen sharing and hopefully you'll be able to see my full screen. And then I can minimize things down and you should now be looking at a screen that says Intelligence Business for Recruiters. Two seconds, let me just check this to see if it's right. And if this is right, then we'll kick off the webinar. Let me just check this. <laughs> okay. Right, according to my clock, 
we're, 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 we're on time. So, welcome everybody to my webinar on business development for, recruit, for recruiters. I'm Shane McCusker, run a company called Intelligent Software. Follow my blog, intel-sw.com forward slash blog. Check me out on LinkedIn. Follow me on Twitter, which is intelligence spelt with a one. Uh, we're following the Twitter stream during this webinar, so if you've got anything interesting to say, criticisms, comments, questions, please tweet about it and mention my Twitter name, which is intelligence spelt with a one. Okay, moving swiftly on. Today's topic, whoops, that was too swift for me. Today's topic, um, recruitment's an interesting game. Um, there's always this uh, seesaw and this balance between jobs on one hand, candidates on the other. As a recruitment consultant, you've always got a list as long as your arm of people who want you to find them a job and a list of clients who potentially want you to recruit people for them. And uh, generally speaking, most recruiters seem to make money in areas where candidates are in scarce supply. And the obvious reason is that it's the clients who pay them the money. And why would a client pay you to recruit somebody if there's plenty of those people around? However, there are many circumstances when it's really advantageous for recruiters to be interested in trying to find jobs. I mean, obviously it's a case where if you've got a good candidate, then why would you want to put them forward to only one job? Or indeed, if you've got multiple good candidates in a field that's in demand uh, that you've been able to source, but your client only wants one of them, what do you do with the rest? Wouldn't it be a really useful idea and a really good idea if you could find other people who want to recruit that type of skilled person that you have plenty of? Uh, obviously, if it's a case where um, skills are really, really scarce, then you can have uh, various clients fighting for that particular candidate. Maybe that has an impact on the fees that you charge, certainly has an impact on the salary you're able to uh, be able to achieve for, for rare skills. So it's always useful and beneficial to be able to have your finger on the pulse with regards to who's recruiting, what skills are in demand, where the sweet spots in the market are, and how do you, how do you uh, take advantage of that and spot those opportunities. So today's webinar is all about this concept of not, not about sourcing candidates, but about sourcing vacancies, sourcing jobs, sourcing clients, finding out what's going on. So let me look at today's agenda. First of all, I'm going to look at this notion of identifying employers, identifying clients. Uh, for Obviously for new companies or companies that are in high growth phase, you may be interested in finding new clients. For uh, people that are a little bit more established out there, then maybe you want to get more vacancies for specific employers or, or in specific niches. Um, it's always useful to know who's hiring, who's letting people go, um, and, and where the growth opportunities are in the marketplace. And it's really important to track this. Um, more and more, I'm, I'm seeing recruitment agencies becoming more and more specialized, more and more niche. And that's a good thing, I think, because I think, I think recruiters who are specialized tend to do a better job because of the fact you are specialized. And it's very interesting to monitor niches to see what's, where, where the demands are and where, where the seesaw is going. So we'll talk about how to find employers, who has vacancies, and ideally how to fill a vacancy before it even exists. How can you be so fast and effective with regards to understanding what's going on in the marketplace that you're actually ahead of your clients, that you know when they've got vacancies before they do. And that's sort of what we're trying to aim at and, and look at all the interesting ways you can do that. And there's lots of interesting ways that you can do that. Okay. After you identify a company, then I'm interested in looking to see how you can work out what's going on there. Who works there? What skills do they have? What's their career path? Uh, what's the company structure? Who are the decision makers? Who's just left? Who's about to join? And try and work out the dynamics of these things. And there's all sorts of interesting ways you can get that information too. Finally, I'm going to look at uh, one of the areas, I, I, to be honest, I was thinking of doing a whole webinar on, on alerts uh, by themselves. There's all sorts of interesting ways that you can take uh, technology and change it around from being something that you look into to something that works for you and actually presents the information to you whenever it becomes available or whenever we find it. And there's all sorts of interesting ways that you can set up alerts so that technology proactively tells you when there's an opportunity. Anyway, <clears throat> let's jump straight in and see where we get to. I'm going to uh, have a look at um, Today I'm going to talk about a fair amount about LinkedIn, and I'm desperately trying to get away from it, but everybody in the recruitment industry seems to know LinkedIn quite well, so I'm using it as an example. Um, 
I'm going to do a people search for uh, FPGA developers. Uh, FPGA, Field Programmable Git Array, going back to my history as an electronic engineer way back when. Uh, and, I, and it's just a job title, could be anything at all really. Uh, I'm going to pretend that I'm recruiting in the UK, so I'm going to click on a filter on the right hand side, uh, the left hand side rather of LinkedIn for UK. And as a result of this, I'm going to find, well, 3,185 people on LinkedIn that have FPGA mentioned and are in United Kingdom. Now, that's all very well. I'm not actually looking for people at this moment in time. What I'm interested in finding out is who employs them. And LinkedIn does a wonderful thing, top left-hand corner, it gives me a list of all the companies, or the top 10 companies, who employ this particular skill set of people that I'm interested in. So here they are, we've got Arm, we've got um, Tira, Thales, Xilinx, and so on. So you've got the companies that are likely to be looking for those skills. These could be hiring companies, most likely. They could also be people that are letting people go. So you could also use it from a headhunting point of view as well. But today we're going to talk about business development. These are the companies, therefore, that you want to engage with. These are the companies you want to have a profile with. These are the companies, if you're involved in FPGA recruitment, then these are the companies you need to be talking to. You can continue on from this. I mean, if I use LinkedIn and do a company search, and let's try for ARM, top of the list there. Oops, sorry, beg your pardon. Didn't mean to do that. Got Apple by mistake. Company search. I get it searches companies. ARM is the one at the top. And there it tells me all about the company. It also gives me a whole list of people that work there, uh, people that are within my network what's going on there, who's joining the company. Now, LinkedIn also allows you to follow companies. And um, in theory, that seems like a good idea. In practice, I'm not too sure I found it particularly useful. I followed a range of companies. You go in and set your settings. Once you follow a company, you can say you, you want to receive alerts. You want to be told about people leaving. And I've said that, but I haven't got any alerts from LinkedIn that are particularly useful. Um, you can watch your updates and see what's going on there, but really LinkedIn's updates, I find them, the, my personal view, I find them slightly cumbersome to use. I don't find it particularly useful, and it certainly doesn't tell me when people leave an organization. And if I'm looking to hire for that organization, knowing who leaves an organization <laughs> would be really, really useful. They promise it, but unfortunately they fail to deliver as far as I'm concerned. If you disagree with me on that, if you feel you can find some benefit to following companies on LinkedIn, please let me know because I'd, I'd really be interested to, to try and find application for following companies on LinkedIn. Okay, I'm going to show you uh, another little search. Now, I've, I've talked about this before in previous webinars, but I think it's a good tool, so I'm going to use it again. If you go to our website, intel-sw.com forward slash search, Enter. Now, it's all lowercase. Now, this is a, a tool. I, I developed it to be built into our software, but it's freely available on our website, which is sort of my development platform for it. So if you're watching my webinars, feel free to jump in and use it if you want to. Now, what this does is that this is it's a Google custom search, and it allows me to search LinkedIn profiles. Unlike LinkedIn, uh, it, it doesn't limit me to 100 uh, results and it doesn't prioritize it in terms of my network so it gives me anybody that, that, that Google in this instance thinks is appropriate. So I'm going to type in FPGA design without in quotation marks. I'm going to say London and I'm going to run my search. And I'm again going to find FPGA profiles of people that are in London. Super duper. Here we go. Mike and Brendan, whatever else, they all say FPGA design, they all say London. Super. However, this is, the reason I'm showing this today is that there's a refinement on this called vacancy search. If I click on vacancy search, what do I get? I get a whole lot of LinkedIn profiles of people, but these are FPGA design people with mention to London, but they've just changed jobs September 2012 to present. September 2012 to present, they've just started a new job. And that sort of implies that they're FPGA designers in around London who have just left a job. Now, if this is a skill set that's in demand, not only am I identifying employers of FPGA designers, but I'm, I'm finding employers who have an active potential vacancy here because somebody's just left. 
if this is a, a, an in-demand skill set, then these are companies I need to talk to. Now, I want to show you something else. This is a, a little uh, diversion because uh, Franco here, I happen to know, is not part of my network. I've clicked on this one before. If I click on his name, it opens up his profile. And it tells me he's a third degree connection. And unfortunately, thanks very much to LinkedIn, it has told me precious little else in the sense that because he's a third degree connection, LinkedIn are now stopping me from gaining access to his profile. However, I'm using uh, uh, Chrome as my browser. If you right click on the link and click it on as open link in incognito window, I get this. Franco's page and all his information. So if you are not logged into LinkedIn and he's a third degree connection, LinkedIn gives you so much more information. You can log out of LinkedIn and then access a public profile, but to be honest, I find that quite cumbersome. I much prefer this use of an incognito window in, oops, somebody's telling me. Okay, sorry, somebody sent me a, a text message there saying there's a problem with my screen. Um, it's not a problem with my screen. This is a Google Hangout, so you'll see my image at the bottom of the screen, and you'll see my main screen there. I'm hoping that that is the case. Let me just check this to make sure it is the case. This is the joy of multiple pieces of technology around me as I do these webinars. Okay, anyway. Sorry, two seconds now. Let me just check my screen display. The screen, and you'll see my main screen there. I, oops, I think you're right. I beg your pardon. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. Uh, okay, so we should now be seeing a screen. Let me show you that again. <laughs> Oh, how embarrassing. Anyhow, um, so if I right click on a candidate profile and then open it in an incognito window, then you will see his LinkedIn profile. Okay, I'll just check. I don't trust myself now, so apologies for this if you are his LinkedIn. Profile. There we are now. Okay, that's okay. So it looks as though it's not really working too well. If there are still problems there, can somebody send me um, a tweet? Uh, just uh, use my name, Intelligence Software, and I'll check my tweets and see if that is working correctly. Okay, <clears throat> sorry about that. <clears throat> let's move. Let's move swiftly along. Hopefully, you can still hear me, and I will do my best to. Uh, explain what's happening on the screen if I have again messed up my screen settings. What am I doing now? Yes, okay, now <clears throat> all this stuff is well and good. However, it's all external information, it's all about LinkedIn. What I'm actually most interested in is information that is unique to you, something that is inside information that's maybe not publicly available. So I'm looking for a channel of information that um, can really do more for me than publicly available information. Good news is you have it. All recruiters do. And it comes from your candidates. Everything your candidate tells you about the companies in which they work or other companies in which they are they're interested in applying for jobs for or whatever else is all available to you. But you need a mechanism within your organization to capture it and work with it in a way that works for you. So start asking questions. If you're not already doing so, when candidates come in, find out what other jobs they're going for. What other jobs do they know exist? Who do they know that is leaving a job? If they're about to leave a job themselves, always ask them the question, when you leave, what is your current employer going to do? Are they going to replace you? Are they going to uh, promote somebody? What's going on? And so uh, the, the difficulty with this, however, is that whenever you talk to candidates, you very often just talk to them about finding them a job, whereas actually I think you should be talking to them about how can you, as a candidate, help me do business development? 
how can you help me grow my business? It may not necessarily help them directly, but hopefully some other conversation with some other candidate will help them. Now, what I'm showing you on my screen at this moment in time is intelligence software. Now, this is the product I develop, uh, and I'm just using it as an example of sort of information management technology within a recruitment agency. And I'm showing you, we've only got two screens. This is the candidate screen of intelligence, which basically gives you profile information about a candidate. Now, a lot of our customers who I believe are watching this may look on this and say, well, this is just information about a candidate. I look at this when I'm talking to a candidate. But I want you to think about this from the point of view of business development. I'm going to zoom in on one section and highlight one tiny little thing. Hopefully, you can see my screen. Please let me know if you can. Uh, aha! Somebody's able to see my screen. That's so good of you to tell me. It's slightly embarrassing whenever I don't really know what's going on. Okay, this person works for Intelligent Software, IBM, and ABC. And you'll notice just to the left, Intelligent Software is a small red arrow. It's quite a subtle thing. A lot of people miss it. And what that tells me is that I don't know who Intelligent Software is. And by implication, it also tells me I do know who IBM is, and I do know who ABC is. And the reason is Intelligence knows that it's important. It's important to cross-reference this person's employers with your client database. Because if he works for IBM and you recruit for IBM, then that's information. You need to record it against the company in which he works. If you don't know who intelligence is, then maybe you should do. Because he works there, he's about to leave there potentially, if you can find him another job or he finds a job for himself. Or it may be a company, if he's got a skill set, that you think, well, if he's got the skill set and he works in that company, then very obviously that company employ that skill set and therefore it's a company I should be talking to. But what do you do with it in your business? How do you record this information? Even if you write it down on a whiteboard, can you report on it? With intelligence, you can. You can create a hot list on intelligence and say, show me everybody who registered last week who works for a company I don't know. Every week, just open up the hot list. It gives you a prospect list of people to call. Maybe your system isn't sophisticated in that. Maybe you can come up with some sort of a reporting mechanism that enables you to search and find this information. Even if it's a piece of paper that you write it down in front of you, whenever you get this leads list, Every candidate that you talk to, where are you working? What are they going to do whenever you leave? What opportunities are there? You know, try and use this information and create it in a way. If you're talking to your client and they're telling you, you know, always ask them, what jobs do you have a constant requirement for? Don't create a real job, create an ad hoc job or create some way of maintaining that so you can search that information. Again, if you've got a decent information management system like, like intelligence, I hope, you can create these pseudo opportunities, these ongoing job requirements. And you need to share that within your organization. You need to create a way that it automatically prompts you to do that. You can create an intelligence you can create a hot list for it. I don't want to keep harking on about intelligence. You need to work out how you do it within your own organization. Create these alerts and these mechanisms whereby you can get information from your candidate pool that enable you to spot these opportunities and do it really, really easily. The easier you make it to happen, the more likely it is to happen. Okay, let me move on from identifying customers to investigating once you find somebody. Now, I've actually opened up intelligence here because I, I, it, again, it, it, it highlights a really simple way to, to pull information together from all sorts of different sources. If you don't use intelligence, try and work out some mechanism to do it within your own business. So, as we said before, intelligence software is highlighted because you don't know who they are. If I double click on intelligence, it says, do you want to create this record? So I'll say yes. Now, even if you read in the newspaper, a, software, a company called Intelligence Software is expanding. It's fine. It's got a, it wants to employ 50 new people. If it's uh, any um, lead that you get, uh, somebody is a candidate referee who works for a company, then utilize that information. Be able to collate and create that information together. But what's really important is databases and information management systems aren't about recording information, they're about doing something with it. So this is where you need to tailor your system so it does something useful. With intelligence, as soon as you create a company record, immediately you get the list of all the candidates who work there. So I've got uh, Marius and John, Jack, uh, whether they're current or, or former colleagues, you've got job titles. The people shown in blue are candidates' references. The most valuable piece of information you've got from any candidate is the people they know, the people that hired them, the people that are passive job seekers who they can introduce you to. 
always collate that information with regard to who they work for. References are the most valuable people on a CV, but only whenever you relate them to the company in which they work. Also, find anybody on the system who mentions that company on their CV. Really, really important information. Once you can manage your own internal information in this way, you can see all the leads that are coming from that and collate in a way that's possible. Relate this to external information. If I press my browser button, it opens up a, a, a LinkedIn widget that gives me a list of everybody that's in my LinkedIn network that works for this company. If you can pull that information together, you can start to see the synergy between it and see where it goes to. It's a really, really useful thing to be able to do and do it quickly. Now, those of you who are lucky enough to use intelligence, I've got all this at your fingertips, but what if you don't use intelligence? Can you do this in any other way? Absolutely. <clears throat> Let's show you a few other free tools that may amuse and interest you. Say, for example, the most obvious place to go and research a company is its own website. So uh, say I go to, well, F&B comes up. f and is a, a bank, um, so I'll go to their website. And I've got a, a nice little, again, I've got Chrome here. Um, it's disappeared. Where's my toolbar gone? Let me just exit out of that. Here we go. So if I go to, sorry, that was an incognito window. It wasn't going to work. If I go to f and B, I've got a little uh, add-in widget here called Who Works At. If you go and Google Who Works At, it'll come up. But there are other tools that you can add in. This is a LinkedIn widget that sits in the toolbar, and it does this. It tells me everybody in my LinkedIn network who works for this company, or at least is related to the domain f and And in this instance, we've got 763 employees in your network, first, second, third degree connections. So you can see who they are and jump in and do searches. You could jump in and do a LinkedIn search for f and and that would probably result in the same sort of thing. But this is just an interesting, clever way to do it. So have a look at a toolbar add-in called Who Works At. It'll, it'll just appear in your toolbar. If ever you want to find anybody, click the button and see what comes up. What else have I got for you? Okay, now, <clears throat> this is particularly useful, but I want to show you, there's this problem that has been puzzling me for some time now, and it was the problem I identified whenever you follow companies on LinkedIn, it gives you this promise that it tells you when people leave. And I actually think, you know, finding out when people leave a company always creates an opportunity. And you saw with the LinkedIn search I do, intel-sw.com forward slash search, that you can identify people who leave a company with a particular skill set. But what if you want to identify people who leave a particular company? Really difficult to do that search. However, aha, you'll be pleased to know I have found out how to do it. I'm going to go to, this is brand new, by the way, brand, brand new. I'm launching this today in this webinar. Uh, so um, you won't have seen it before, and for a very good reason. It doesn't quite work yet, but no matter, it will do. Hopefully, you'll see enough in this that you'll think to yourself it's a useful tool. Please give me some feedback on this, because this is a brand new little tool that I've developed. That's the URL for it. Um, let's see if I can make that a bit bigger for you. Oh, that's not very helpful. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Go on, do your thing, notepad. Okay, so it's www.intel-sw.com forward slash search levers with a capital S and a capital L. And it brings you to this page. Now, my idea was I wanted to try and identify when people leave a particular company. So if I want to do recruitment for a company or to one of my clients, then this system will alert me to the fact that somebody leaves. So if I type in F and B, for example, run my search, it'll tell me that Kyle Cullen has just left. Click on his name, brings me to his LinkedIn profile, secondary connection, so I can actually see something here, and you'll see that he left F and B when in well May 2012, but he's just started working in August 2012 with this other company. So um, it's it's going back a little bit in time, but it's not too bad. If I let's try another company. BBC, it gives me all the people that have left the BBC within a period of time. So this is a way of being able to search LinkedIn and try and find people on LinkedIn who have just left a company and gone somewhere else. What I'm hoping to do, and this is the bit that doesn't work yet, is allow you to enter an email address and then create a weekly alert so that every week it'll send you an email and say, you're monitoring intelligent software, somebody's just left intelligent software. You're monitoring 
BBC or FNB or IBM or Microsoft or whatever, and here are the people that have left that company. Now, if we if I can get that up and running, and hopefully it'll be up and running this week uh, or maybe next week, uh, then uh, you can try this out, see how it goes to. But the the search works at this moment in time. Uh, it also has an alternative search, which is look worth looking at as well, where it'll tell you any other organizations which have uh, that are worth looking at. So these are all sub sub companies associated with that name. So it's worth checking out those as well. You might want to set up alerts for those. Try it out. Um, it's as I say, intel-sw.com forward slash search levers, brand new tool that I've developed. Quite proud of it. Uh, no doubt I'll get a, a bit of feedback on it if you can give that to me. What else have we got? Okay, with regard to setting up alerts, uh, there's another tool that I quite like that I came across some time ago. Um, which, it's not a game changer, but it might be interesting for you. Uh, have a look at www.jobchangenotifier.com. Let me blow this up for you. Um, jobchangenotifier.com. What this does is my search looks for people who have left a particular job or left a particular company. Job Change Notifier allows you to set up alerts so that it monitors your LinkedIn connections and send you an email when any of those people change job. So I don't know if it's a game changer. LinkedIn will actually give you the information anyway. But Job Change Notifier, I quite like it because it's simple. And it, it just gives you that, whereas LinkedIn tends to bombard you with a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, if you just want to find out who's changing jobs within your network, have a look at Job Change Notifier, set it up and see what happens. OK, what else have we got? Yes, no, <clears throat> this is cool. I like this. If you're interested in looking at uh, who's, uh, well, for a particular company when they're hiring, the most obvious way to try and find out when they're hiring is if they have a job board on their website. But it's quite tedious and, and cumbersome for you to constantly revisit their website. So how can you automate this process of being alerted to the fact that somebody's employing? Well, let me show you. Say, for example, I go to a career page. Here's one that I just stumbled upon. Uh, which amused me, British Roller Sports Federation. I didn't know there was such a thing, but there you go. They have a careers page. I have another little toolbar add-in, which is called Page Monitor. Again, Google Page Monitor. There are lots of websites that do this. Uh, this is a Chrome add-in, but you can, you, you know, there's lots of different ways of doing that. So just Google Web Page Monitor or Page Monitor and see what you come up with. Um, what this enables me to do is that if I'm on any page at all, I click the link and I can set the page to be monitored. And that means that uh, you can see that it's got one indicator on this because it's telling me that one of the pages I'm monitoring has just changed. And it's this one. It's my blog page. So I can view the pages, uh, the, view the changes on that and see what's been added. Uh, did it take me there? Page monitor. There we go. So then it'll take me to my page and it'll highlight the changes that have been made there. This incident hasn't noticed any changes at all. Apologies for this. What I actually changed was the, the 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 browsing window on the webinar, so it hasn't highlighted that. But normally, what happens is it highlights the text changes that appear there. So have a look at job job uh, uh, our page monitor add-in. Really interesting. Now this got me thinking, and I started thinking about well, uh, it's all very well following your clients' job posting pages, but what else can you you follow? And one of the other places that I find quite interesting to follow are job boards. And uh, if anybody watches my webinar, uh, I'm not going to reiterate this. If you use the site colon operator uh, in Google, you can do an x-ray search of people's web pages. What I'm doing here is an x-ray search of a web page called Career Junction. So it's site colon Career Junction is the South African jobs board. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm quite interested to see what sort of pages they have. And as you look down here, you'll notice that they've got a lot of different pages which are for particular clients. And some of these clients are recruitment agencies, but some of them are corporates. And for the corporates, I, I, I haven't clicked on this before, so I don't know what's going to come up here. It'll give me a list of all the jobs that they advertise. So why not use your page monitor to set a monitoring alert for your clients on a job board? Why not also set up monitoring alerts for your competitors on a job board or a competitor's page on, on their site so you can see what jobs your competitors are working on. Does that not, is that not useful, particularly if you're interested in specific types of roles? Because job boards also are quite good at 
setting up pages to categorize jobs. So if I is staying with Career Jump, Junction, for example, I'm just going to change this X-ray search to www.careerjunction.com. Let's see, they've got a page for their mining jobs, jobs that are tagged mining. I could set up an alert if I was particularly interested in a particular category of job. You can set up your page monitors for that. So set up lots of page monitors. The other thing, of course, you can do is, uh, which is a really good way to setting up alerts, is to use Google Alerts. www.google.com forward slash alerts. If you're interested in your Boolean strings, your X-ray searches, your Google searches, you can set them up as Google Alerts. You can set them up to look at job boards. You can set them up to look for um, uh, X-ray searches on any web page. Say, for example, you wanted to do an X-ray search on Twitter. If I go to the site, colon, twitter.com, I've set one up already, twitter.com, uh, hash job or hash jobs because people tend to send out tweets with a hashtag on it, hash job, hash jobs, within brackets, London, FPGA, it gives me a Google search of Twitter for anybody who's tweeting about FPA job, FPA, FPGA jobs in London. So this gives me a stream. I could feed that into a Google alert and then Google will email me every day or every week with regard to new jobs that are appearing. But you don't need to use Google alerts for that. Uh, on Twitter, so I use a system called Hootsuite to monitor my Twitter profile. Well, let's see if this opens up. It's a little bit slow because my computer is quite intensively used at this moment in time. Hootsuite is quite intense in its use. Um, okay, as this is loading up, I'll tell you what I've done. I've created a Hootsuite uh, channel to look for us. Just let me get this connection working. And as soon as it comes up, I can talk a little bit more. I don't want internet activity killing my audio. Come on. So I use Firefox for my Hootsuite channel. It's just running a little bit slow today. Give it two more seconds. Come on, Hootsuite, you can do it. That's H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com. If I look at my job feeds, you'll see what I've done. Sorry about this. Usually the internet runs a bit faster. So here what we've got is we've got a Twitter feed. Uh, all I've done is I've put in, let's open the search up for you. Uh, this is a Twitter feed for that hash job or hash jobs, FPGA London and I get a full list of people advertising jobs on that. I've got another uh, Hootsuite feed here looking at Twitter feeds on job or, or jobs for with a company name associated with it. I've got Coca-Cola in there and I'm looking at Coca-Cola jobs but I could change it to any other company name and see who's tweeting about those those jobs in, in that particular company or organization. I could use skill sets, I could use whatever. Be imaginative in what you go looking for but at least Hootsuite will be able to send you, create this uh, feed for it uh, and, and, and deliver it to your desktop so it alerts you to the fact that things are happening. Okay, that looks as though it's about time. I've slightly overshot my mark due to my screen problems. Um, let's just have a quick look at the Twitter feed to see what's going on there. Um, uh, well, we've got lots of people saying we can't see my screen and some people saying they can. <laughs> Thank you for that. No questions coming up there. Please give me some feedback on that. Um, I'd be really interested to know what, what people think of it. Uh, this is me, Shane McCusker, Intelligence Software, intel-sw.com. Uh, follow my blog, intel-sw.com forward slash blog. Follow me on Intelligence. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like my YouTube channel. Please do. The video that's there at the moment, just press the like symbol on it. Uh, we, we do like some feedback. If you want to put a comment on that, please do so. Really interested to know. Um, Check out the, 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 those two links that I put up there, particularly my first one, this search levers one, because that's brand new. Uh, just launching it today. Really would be interested in your feedback. Let me know if it's useful. Uh, let me know if you're not going to bother with it. That would be useful too. Um, we've got a lot more work to do on that to, just to polish it up and make it look a bit nicer and see what will go to it. Uh, if it becomes popular, we'll build on it. If it doesn't, it'll just fade away. One other thing to mention, uh, next month, November, for those of you in South Africa, please check out www.truesa.coza. That is 
through South Africa coming to Cape Town on the uh, 6th of uh, November and Johannesburg on the 8th of November. Bill Borman's uh, unconference, recruitment unconference, going around the world. Bill's going to be there. I'm helping organize it a little bit and I'll be there too. Uh, we really want a, a big group of people coming along. It'll be the most fascinating and, and interesting day out to talk and share ideas about recruitment and really learn an awful lot about this stuff of social recruiting, how to use technology and techniques better and more effectively, get up to speed on all the issues facing recruitment in South Africa for those two days. Um, hope that was useful. Please give me some feedback uh, and I look forward to speaking to you very soon. I'm doing one more session today so if, if any of your colleagues or friends or anybody else you think is interested in attending, please let them know and of course you can follow this video on YouTube uh, or on the blog page at any time. Thanks very much for your time. Talk soon. Bye-bye.